Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tara Kangarlu, and I want to welcome our viewers in the United States and around the world to the live Facebook coverage of the seventh annual Concordia Summit here in New York City. Now, my guest right now really does not need any introduction. I feel anybody interested in health and wellness and nutrition in the U.S. and around the world already knows him, and his new season just started yesterday. So no one else other than the great <laughs> Dr. Oz. How are you? Thank, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited. It's my ninth year. When uh, years ago, my wife and Oprah conspired to get me to do the show. I had no idea it would have the impact, nor last as long as it has, but I enjoy it every single day, and it's been a blessed to be part of it. I just, I have so many questions from you, but I'm going to stick to a few important ones. Please. Let's talk about Amazon and Whole Foods. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think it was a very wise move by Amazon. I don't think Whole Foods had a lot of choice if they were going to make a major move into uh, the digital delivery of food, which is the future. I do think that it accelerates Amazon's move into the space for the high quality brand. What they did very wisely is drop the costs. Mm. And by doing that, they moved from being whole paycheck to perhaps something that's actually able to be perceived as serving high quality food at a reasonable value. You know, when it, Whole Foods first started, and I have to credit them for starting a revolution in, 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 ex, in high quality consumer markets, they were the only ones out there. Sure. But all their competitors, the Trader Joe's of the world, are providing very high quality products as well. So how do you differentiate yourself when you're twice, or not say twice, but more expensive? I think Amazon historically been able to, to crack that puzzle. We are seeing technology evolve and a lot of mergers taking place. Do you think food companies like Trader Joe's that you mentioned or chains like that will potentially merge with online brands. Is that the wave of the future? Do you see that? I do believe it's going to be the wave of the future because the DNA of the organizations are very different. You can't just create a digital platform if you're a, a traditional bricks and mortar facility. And it's good to have people in different walks of life begin to, to bring their ideas together. The question is, are they mergers or are they takeovers? And that's part of the challenge that's going on right now because the digital world has been effectively subsidized oftentimes by governments. Small things, sometimes big things, have allowed them to succeed when more traditional uh, organizations could not. But with those situations now becoming evident and multiples being higher for digital companies versus bricks and mortar, it's sometimes easier for the digital guys to buy the bricks mm. and mortar guys. Absolutely. Let's talk about calories versus quality of food. For the longest time, we cared about calorie counting. Now, uh, McDonald's, Burger King, Subway, everybody has the signs, what's the calories? But do you think we should look at the quality of the ingredients and how processed they are? Is it a game of calorie versus quality? There's actually an answer to this. It has to do with the biology of your brain, which is not looking to count calories, it's looking to count nutrients. Your brain wants you to eat the foods that it needs for its own well-being. And if you have a lot of food and there's lots of calories but there's no nutrients, french fries, you, yeah. your, body, your brain's going to say, go back and get some more. So you're much better off eating high-quality, nutrient-dense foods. If you look at places in the world, that are blue zones. Dan Buettner has demonstrated many of these places mm. are differentiate themselves by having high quality food. Often it's not low in calories, but it's lower than what it would have been if it was fried junk. And it's that transition that causes the obesity epidemic. So yes, calories count, but it's more important well, to make sure the nutrients important. are there. And best example, nuts. Mm. You know, nuts have a lot of calories, right? They're, but they're tree I gain eggs. A lot of weight when I have nuts. You do? Yes. Some people do, but in, 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 in larger trials, assessments, examinations of people eat nuts, it's a, high, it's a high quality fat. People tend to lose weight mm. on average. You're so skinny, I don't know if you can tell the difference. <laughs> All right, now, if tomorrow, Dr. Oz, you were chairman of the world, what food policy will you immediately implement in developing countries? Well, there's a book that I have that's coming out, my first one in 10 years, next week, called yeah, Food Can Fix It. And the basic promise is high quality foods served at an affordable price will make you feel better. And I can address the specific things that are plague us all, whether it's your mental acumen, your energy level, your ability to lose weight, whatever it might be. And most of the developing world, because they don't have resources to buy high quality nutrient food, buy calorie dense food that doesn't have nutrients in it. And then you end up with chronic ailments like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, cancer, all these things that cost a ton of money to manage and you're mortgaging your nation's future. It's also bad for the kids whose brains primarily develop in the first few years of life. So you need to have high quality omega-3 fats. You need the basic vitamin-rich foods, the fruits and vegetables that most of us know we're supposed to have. And the food policy in many of these countries for pennies could be improved with dollar dividends down the road. I'm so glad you're mentioning this, especially for the children. Today, the world 
is having a huge refugee problem. Right now, the UN General Assembly uh, is ongoing in New York, and this is part of a conversation. For the viewers that are watching us around the world in countries like Lebanon, Jordan, and Turkey, where you have family in, uh, there are a lot of Syrian refugees in the urban areas. If there was one superfood that locals in these countries and communities can could give these refugee children, what would that food item be, that superfood? Let's say they don't have access to the super bars that uh, aid workers give. The most Dates, important nuts. food you can eat, period, vegetables. And almost all the places you mentioned have rich sources of relatively affordable vegetables. So yes, I could recommend broccoli and cauliflower over lettuce, but frankly, it doesn't matter. Extra vegetables of any source would be the ideal nutrient to give kids. And the reason I say vegetables in specific is they're generally uh, uh, locally available, but if you can't get them locally, they can be frozen. That's okay. Frozen vegetables have almost the same nutrient content and they're often much better because you can ship them easier and you don't have wastage. The one problem in these refugee areas is they don't have refrigeration. That's so true. That's why fresh produce is probably the easiest way to go. Fresh produce. Okay. I want to get to fun, quick questions. Three things Dr. Oz can't live without. Dark chocolate. You know, 80% cocoa or better. Um, I love Greek yogurt because like the thickness and I love the berries that go in it, especially okay. blackberries or mulberries, which is what we had in my father's home in the middle of Turkey. He's from Konya, which is like the, it's like being from Nashville in Turkey. It's where Rumi is. Yes, where Rumi was in Konya, exactly. That's where my, my ancestors are from there. Well, beautiful. Speaking of Rumi, what's your philosophy for a work-life balance? What is your ritual? Uh, but, well, first of all, I don't think there is a work-life balance. Okay. I think you've got two opposing forces. Work is, is going to force you to think about yourself as being different from everybody else because you've got to excel. And the, your general life, your family, is about being part of a community. So one wants to be different, one wants to be the same. So I think there's actually a sharp point at the top of that balancing act which hurts to sit on. So you're going to be one side or the other. Don't fret over it. It's just reality. Try to climb over to see the other side. It's sort of nice to do. So for me, morning meditation with some yoga. First thing up, but not long. You know, I'm talking about seven to ten minutes. And that stretching meditative experience for me, like calisthenics, works very well. Number two, I, uh, you know, all day long I've got some snack next to me. Usually something that's really, really good for you, which I admit to, but I can snack on cauliflower all day. I know it sounds nerdy, <laughs> but I want something in my mouth, and I know if it's not that, it could be junk. And, and I think that would make you not think that you're hungry, you know, when you have something in your mouth. It is. It convinces me that I, I have control over my destiny. And the last is that I never go to bed with my wife mad at me. <laughs> Even though in, in my house the prosecution never rests. <laughs> Well, uh, last question. Uh, President Trump is in town today, and you had a much anticipated interview with him a couple of months ago. If you could be part of his advisory board when it comes to food policy, what would be the one absolute thing you would push for school kids uh, in the United States to do or not to so do? Let me answer it in two parts. I had Ivanka Trump on, uh, and that I taped it yesterday. She's going to air on Thursday. And I talked to her about kids and she's very much involved with working families and the fact that mothers in America don't get a, a leave of absence when they have a child. With, America's the only country in the developed world where that's the case. Every other one does have rules and the reason it's important is that moms when they stay with their kids nurture them both with the breast milk but also just physically. It helps the kids brains develop, it helps the moms cope with postpartum depression which Ivanka Trump acknowledged that she had uh, and so this whole story starts to come together quite nicely. With food policy, we actually subsidize food that's not necessarily good for you, and we don't help with the food that is good for you. Sure. So my, my recommendation to a Trump administration official who's interested in food policy and, and health is focus on two things. Making sure that you don't subsidize any food, that way it's all an even playing field, and we value food for what it really costs. And number two, I think we should focus not so much on spending less on health care, but costing less health care. Mm. There are simple, easy things to do. That's my, top, my topic today that we can do that I think can dramatically reduce the amount of money spent on healthcare in America by bringing more value for the money that we do spend. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us can be part of that because the real battle for healthcare, I'll give you a secret, is not fought in Washington and not fought in hospitals, it's fought in your home, your Absolutely. kitchen, your living room, your bedroom. Absolutely, and on that note, I'm so grateful for my time with you Pleasure. and for being here at the seventh annual Concordia Summit. Thank you, sir. Stay well.